Hello, today I'm gonna try to do a video with a little more information than normal. So I'm gonna dye a shirt, hopefully in a similar style to this. I tied another one in a very similar way, uh, but I, the only change I'm gonna make is I'm gonna try to get pink lines instead of orange. This could be difficult because pink and red molecules are bigger than the other colors and it's harder to get them to saturate deeply into the fabric. One of the ways we're gonna try to force the red in is by applying the dye to a dry shirt so that the shirt will suck it in further. If you pre-soak this in soda ash and wring it out and try to apply reds, the reds will never get under these ties. They might not even get under them dry, but I'm gonna try my best. So it's been tied with artificial sinew, which is a thick waxy thread, and when you pull it tight after wrapping several times, it creates so much pressure there that the moisture cannot get under the tie unless the shirt is dry and blues will seep under the ties. Please wear a mask if you're gonna be handling powdered dye. It's really fine stuff and it floats in the air and it's just good not to breathe it in. Okay, okay friends? Okay, we're coming over to my utility sink, which has got the hose attachment. Um, does a mist setting, all kinds of settings, very nice. And I've got my rack here and then the dry shirt. I know that this little nubby right here is the front of the shirt. This is like the centerpiece, the money piece. So we're gonna keep an eye on this one and make sure that it looks well saturated. I don't want it to be overly dark and I don't want it to be undersaturated. So just uh, keep an eye on it. The way that I know that this is the front is that I like tied it uniquely. It's got little nubbies coming off in different directions. So yeah, I used to tie every tentacle looking the exact same way. And then I would always lose track of what the front was. And then my shirts would always look better on the back. So we're trying to avoid that these days. And just slightly missed it a little bit so that the dye and the sort of ash will kind of stick to the top of that. I'm mixing four different pinks together into a jar with some soda ash. There's no exact ratio to follow here. Just do what feels right. <laughs> I'm doing that to make my dye go farther. When you mix the soda ash in, it sprinkles easier so you're not wasting big clumps. And it also helps to have multiple colors saturating into the tight folds. Okay, spoiler alert, I'm gonna show you exactly how I usually do the cold mist method, but I don't actually love the way this particular shirt turns out but you can still use all of this information that you're seeing from me with other colors besides pink and red and it will look good so just don't use pink <laughs> uh, so i'm sprinkling on a whole bunch of my mixture here that has soda ash mixed in and then i'm going to spray it until it looks like it's about halfway soaked through because when I flip it over, I still want to see some white areas that I can apply a different color to so that the second color can have some spots where it looks like that pure color. So here we are, I'm just misting it. I'm gonna try to leave this in real time so you can get a sense for how long I actually missed the shirts. Um, and how long do you want to miss? I like to do it until you start to see it washing away a little bit, the fabric will start to look lighter and you're not seeing any undissolved dye anymore. I like to get it all dissolved and then have it start looking like it's rinsing away a little bit. That's usually a good indicator that it's seeping deep into the tight folds. All right, this is gonna be a minute of spraying condensed down to eight seconds if you're curious how long I would be spraying here. Okay, this is the point when I wanna check the other side. I see a good amount of white still left, so this is a great opportunity to add a second color. And I'm going to add black because I really like the contrast that I've been seeing with different color combinations like black and blue, black and orange, black and green. So I'm, I'm adding more soda ash on because it's cheap and you know, I'm pretty lazy, so I'm not pre-soaking in soda ash anymore these days. I just sprinkle it on and it seems to be working just fine. I have my black in an old, uh, I think it's some type of seasoning shaker. Makes it easier to just shake it out so you're not using too much dye. The soda ash helps it to sprinkle out a little easier as well. 
Also convenient that you can just have the soda ash and the dye in one step. And so, yep, just go back to spraying with the cold mist. I have experimented with using hot water, but I find that when I use hot, it makes the dye react with the fabric so fast that it looks blotchy. So you'll get like high reactivity right on the surface, and then there's no dye left to travel deeper into the shirt. So uh, that could be a cool effect if you want to harness it for a different type of look. But I don't like the way that looks on geodes. My goal is always to have sm smoother colors and uniformity to a certain degree. So I find that if you just use cold mist to kind of replicate the effect of ice, um, you can get the dye into the into the deep, uh, like tighter folds to get it in there deeper. And then after you're done applying the dye and you've got everything where you want it, then you can just soak it in hot water or you can let it sit for 24 hours. A lot of people use hot water spraying um, and they call it hot water immersion technique because you can, it's pretty much batched and ready to go, ready to rinse immediately after you dye it. So that's fun, but I think it also makes for blotchy colors. It's difficult to get really good saturation when the hot water is causing your dye to react right on the surface. So I'm just trying really hard to get enough dye and water into this shirt. In the end, I didn't do enough, or maybe I'm just, I just have too high of expectations for what pink can do. I think that's probably the case. Pink is just not the go-to color if you want to saturate really deep into those folds. Brown is not good either. Have you ever tried shiitake mushroom on geodes and then you're like sorely disappointed when you open it up and there's huge white spots? I don't know quite what it is, if it's the size of the color molecules or if there's a whole lot of fillers in shiitake mushroom, that particular color from Dharma, but it's not a great geode color unless you're using a ton of other colors that will fill in those white spaces that are left. So I'm adding more soda ash, a little bit more raven to add some detailed speckling. And I, when I'm adding just a little bit of raven for the detailed parts, I'm not rinsing that as much because I do want to leave some specks to be a little darker. Okay, I decided to speed up this last section because there's nothing really exciting happening. I'm just continuing to rinse it. Why do I keep rinsing when it looks well saturated already? My goal with that is I want to make some washed out areas. It's another detail that's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna fill up this bin with hot water. It's got a little bit of soda ash powder in there just because, I don't know, why not? I don't really know if there's a huge difference in color retention setting with or without that little bit of soda ash in the hot soak. My goal with this is to soak the shirt and set it in about 30 minutes so that I can rinse it out and see how it looks. I learn the most when I can dye one shirt at a time. Tie it, dye it, see the results as fast as possible so that in your brain you connect all the variables more closely. If you're in the learning stage, the worst thing you could do would be to tie up 10 shirts, dye them all like batch style, and then not take notes or take videos. And then you're rinsing everything out and you don't remember what you did to each one. I certainly don't remember. And then it's really frustrating. So this is how I speed up the process and notice patterns so that I can make adjustments with the next shirt. Okay, it's been about 35 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this out and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, take a look at how on the front side, you can see a lot of pink, it's lighter. On the back side, it looks almost black. This is how I know that there's gonna be a good amount of variation and contrast in the shirt because you don't want the whole thing to look the same. You wanna have some highs and lows and contrast for visual appeal. Now hopefully it actually looks good when I unwrap it. Because I didn't love how the first shirt turned out, I made a second one. Here's a few quick clips of the second one. 
Okay, the shirt is finished. I pulled it out of the dryer and let's talk about the results because they're conflicting to me. Um, just to start off, uh, in here where the ties are pretty close together, you can see there's lots of blotchiness and a lack of saturation. Um, I keep making this mistake, like making really complicated designs on the front, thinking like I want it to be super interesting right on the front. And then it gets blotchy like this. Like this is my worst enemy right here. <laughs> um, so let me show you the back. The back is where I don't care. And the back usually turns out better. And I think it did. Um, so check out these spots where there's a lot of space between the ties. Like it just saturates beautifully. And I like that detail in there. Um, so I just need to keep remembering that in the future. Like give yourself more space between the ties because then there's more surface area here for the dye to um, get into the fabric and spread towards the lines. Okay, so uh, Raven is the color that I used uh, for this black area. It generally does a good job of saturating and creating nice crisp lines. The other pink color is a combination of four different pinks and uh, predictably, it did not saturate well. I, I think I had higher hopes <laughs> than I should have. Um, it did okay right here. The Raven is definitely supplementing some of the saturation. So, yeah, let's take a look pretty close here. So I applied the pink first, so it gets closest to the line and then the tie gets tighter because the fabric absorbs, absorbs the moisture, swells, makes the tie tighter. And then the black, like the second color, can't quite get as close to the line. So that's a cool effect to keep in mind when you apply in different steps with different colors. I really like this area down here. So if I were to do this shirt again, I would try to make more space between the ties like this and yeah i did actually go and dye a second shirt so i'll show you that now i tried adding more colors hoping that would help the saturation issue but i think it had more to do with the ties and the fact that pink and red are just difficult to move into tight areas Okay, this is my second attempt at making a pink shirt. I added orange to the pink to, to hopefully get one of the colors to saturate completely towards the lines. And in some areas, it looks nice, like this area that I'm showing you right here. But we ran into the same problem with blotchiness around the lines that are just too congested. Too much going on here. It's very busy to me, but I think there are some cool things happening, especially on the back. Again, where I didn't care as much. It looks fantastic right there. Check that out. So look at that, just three lazy lines that are spaced a lot more and the saturation is better. Some nice details. I love the jaggedness of this line. So overall, um, color saturation did improve when I added orange to the pink and I also just spent way more time trying to, like I added more dye and spent more time spraying this shirt so that also helped, but using more colors is definitely helpful as well. So yeah, there it is. Okay, just so that you guys know, I am not overly hard on myself all the time. Here is an example of a shirt that I do like the outcome of. So this one was orange, reds, and raven. And so this, I like this. This seems nice. It's not overly congested. Saturation is good. Um, let me check out the back. Also nice. I think orange saturates better than reds. I hope that you've learned something from this video. Uh, this is a great example of how even having a lot of, of experience, you can end up with results that you don't love, but you just have to keep trying.